Welcome to Weekend Bite presented by Wall Street Breakfast. I'm Leslie Osmond and July's CPI is chilling out. The markets seemed happy about the news that inflation cooled more than expected. Energy, including fuel, experienced decreases while food and shelter are still on the rise. The labor market adds more than half a million jobs and meme stocks are back in action. Joining us today is Sam Rowe, CFA and founder of Ticker, spelled T-K-E-R, which offers curated news, data, and analysis on the economy and markets. Sam, it's great to have you. Thanks for having me. Talk to us about CPI, which increased to 8.5% in July, the first hint of potential moderating. Do you think the Fed has some breathing room or will they remain hawkish? I think the Fed does have a, a bit of breathing room. Um, I think it's great to see that uh, from a month-to-month perspective that prices have, have cooled significantly. Now, I think publicly they're going to continue to uh, embrace a very hawkish tone because prices are still up on a year-over-year basis. Like you said, it's 8.5% on a year-over-year basis. But um, I think we are sort of at the beginning of what is going to turn out to be very compelling evidence, as the Fed says, um, toward uh, having uh, actual cooling prices. Do you think inflation has peaked? I think it's possible, um, you know, but, you know, I thought inflation peaked uh, last February and March also. And, and then suddenly you have things like an exogenous shock, like the the, the war breaking out in Ukraine. Um, you have persistent supply chain issues and, and sometimes surprises happen. Um, and sure, uh, I thought inflate, I thought inflation peaked back in uh, early spring. Uh, I think inflation probably peaked now. Um, but, you know, you, you never know what um, uh, kind of exogenous shock might might come out. I think something that's really encouraging right now is that a lot of metrics tied to supply chains, stuff like supplier delivery times, inventory levels, um, you know, shipping rates, trucking rates, trucking capacity, all the stuff has improved considerably. And, and this is the kind of thing that's going to help uh, bring inflation down. And we've seen a bit of a bearish bounce. In today's market, it seems like some instances of good news is bad, bad news is good. And I've heard you say it before as well. Um, Do you think that the hot jobs report, which likely would have spelled bad news, is going to offset the CPI news recently? Sure. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's extremely complicated right now because uh, you know, you have a Federal Reserve that's actively trying to slow the economy down in its, in its efforts to bring uh, economic demand down. And so to in, in that with the ultimate aim of bringing inflation down. Um, but, you know, what's interesting is we, we've had this jobs boom and it's not just um, July that saw jobs growth, but we had um, considerable jobs growth every month since the beginning of the year. And the good news, and this is good, good news, not bad, good news, but the good news is that despite all of this increase in, in jobs, um, you know, we get an inflation rating that's that's kind of cool. Um, and so what I think that actually speaks to is that um, probably it, it's there's a lot of help coming from the supply side of the equation that's um, helping to relieve some of this pressure when it comes to inflation. So, um, you know, on one hand, uh, it's scary to see, you know, good news in the economy because that means more demand and it should be inflationary. But if things are improving on the supply side, then um, then, yeah, you know, we're, we're just like the data confirmed yesterday that it's possible for us to get good economic news and have cool inflation readings. So, yeah, we might be coming into this period where good news begins to be uh, good news returns to being good news. (laughs) And we've heard about, you know, the the labor shortages, particularly in the service oriented sector. Um, Yet the labor report paints a different picture. You recently wrote about labor hoarding. Talk to us about what that means and how it may impact the unemployment figures. Yeah, you know, one of the things that's really interesting about, you know, you know a, a, again, like we, we are getting um, uh, a lot of economic data that is slowing outside of the labor market. Things like retail sales have cooled. Manufacturing has slowed. Um, and obviously we've seen both the consumer sentiment reports as well as the business sentiment reports that are, are very, very, very gloomy. Um, but something that we aren't seeing in a big way is layoffs. Layoffs, the, you know, the, the BLS's JOLTS data is continuing to tell us that layoffs are at historic lows. They're at lower than any other period that we've seen before the pandemic. Um, we do hear anecdotes from tech, big tech companies and, and certain, um, you know, startups and stuff that are laying uh, uh, employees off on an anecdotal basis. But on an economy level, the layoffs continue to be very low. So what is this about? Um, there are a handful of economists that are starting to speculate that, yeah, it's this phenomenon called labor hoarding. And one of the reasons why 
uh, you might have labor hoarding is because of what uh, all these businesses just experienced in the last couple of months, right? Coming out of the pandemic, after laying off, you know, 20 million people, um, the economy bounced back very, 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 very aggressively and very quickly. And, you know, all these businesses that had so much demand and so much stuff to, uh, you know, to sell and so many services to provide didn't have enough workers to sell and deliver on those goods. And so, you know, we, we have been hearing about this scramble for workers, which has led to surging wages. Um, and, you know, and I think if, if we are um, on the cusp of another major economic slowdown or, or perhaps recession, um, there might actually be some appetite for, for corporations to actually hang on to workers despite uh, falling demand. And, and keep in mind, you know, it's not just a, a matter of recruiting becoming more difficult, but corporate corporate balance sheets are much stronger today than they were before the pandemic and during the, the last crisis. So they have some financial capacity to hang on to workers. Switching gears a little bit, meme stocks are back in action. What are your thoughts on the meme frenzy and why would investors, especially right now when market volatility is at all time highs, why would they consider these meme stocks? I mean, you, you know, it's 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 incredibly complicated to understand exactly what's going on in the heads of, uh, of folks who, who take such high risk bets um, on companies that might not have a, a whole bunch of cash flow or, or whatever. But, um, you know, I, I, as much as I, I subscribe to, to fundamental analysis and believe that in the long run, uh, companies trade on fundamentals, you know, I also fully appreciate the idea that, you know, whether it's earnings or stock prices or whatever, or that, that stuff does move on momentum. And when you do see the price of something where you can't justify it by fundamentals, but you see the prices go up, um, chances are, you know, the prices might continue going up. Now they can crash spectacularly, um, but you know, I, I, I do think it is just sort of uh, people drawn to momentum, and, and it's just as simple as that. Sam, thanks so much for joining us today. Sam Rowe, founder of Ticker. Up next, we have Kim Khan for next week's Catalyst Watch. Take it away, Kim. Thanks. Um, next week, we're going to get, I guess, the uh, third part of the big economic uh, triumvirate for the Fed. You've had the labor report. This week, we have the inflation reports. And next week, we're going to get information on housing. Um, there's going to be uh, existing home sales for July, as well as uh, you know, housing starts and building permits the same month, and um, NEHB for August. All that's going to give us a better picture of what everyone's expecting to be a cooling housing market. That's very important for the Fed, especially it comes to um, the stickiness of inflation that we did see, even though the CPI was really cool. Uh, rents were you know, still very, uh, very elevated. And so the Fed's wanting to see a cool down in the housing market, slow down there. That'll give it its even more breathing room than it got with the inflation's numbers of this this week and it, it dovetails nicely with uh, earnings where we've got you know home depot and lowe's both reporting and they'll be able to give a more granular insight into what people are spending on um and if they're looking into doing up new their homes and spending on diy um city was out today already kind of jump jumping ahead of lowe's earnings with a downgrade to neutral saying that they think that the housing overhang is just going to be too much for their numbers and even like a, a small miss on top and bottom lines would probably you know is already baked into the uh, expectations here thanks kim we look forward to tuning in next week have a great weekend